I think that uh, Israel is, is appealing to Pfizer and probably also Moderna in terms of our ability to distribute uh, vaccinations uh, all over the country. So you, you're right, we are a very small country in terms of territory and uh, also the suppliers of healthcare here, we, we rely only on four um, health plans that have very uh, sophisticated logistical systems and also they have a centralized computer system. So the electronic medical records and using our ID numbers allow us to follow on all people who get vaccines. So it's very easy to summon them and it's very easy to uh, follow them on because the Ministry of Health receives uh, from these uh, health plans the list of people who got vaccinated and also it, it has the cent centralized uh, list of people who are positive for COVID-19. And we also have a centralized system for following on uh, vaccine adverse reactions. So this makes us, I think, a very appealing country to, to companies such as uh, Pfizer as a, as a test case to see uh, a post, um, um, post marketing uh, surveys on, on the effects of vaccine population wise. Yeah, and there's something else the story. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that Israel's managing to squeeze more dosages out, out of every vial as well. They're supposed to have, is it five doses per vial, but actually you found a way of getting more out. I mean, just basic stuff of using your resources better. That's true, but I don't think this counts for uh, many more doses. So apparently uh, you, you, the, the vials are supposed to suffice for five uh, doses and sometimes there are extra uh, volume, so you, you could have uh, six doses per, per vial, but I don't think this is the, 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 the real secret behind the, our success. I think it's most, uh, mostly about the logistics of uh, distribution and uh, the centralized uh, system that affords us to, to do it so effectively. Nevertheless, Can I, I must say that... Mutations? That, yeah. Right. Can I can I ask you about that? Because what we've seen from Pfizer every night from uh, one of its scientists that they've tested 16 different mutations so far and they've not had any significant impact on the success of that Pfizer BioNTech vaccine at this stage. But they're saying there's no guarantee that, that you know, the 17th one that comes along, if there's another mutation that there isn't a problem, then uh, what concerns do you have this stage about the, the success of the vaccines? So currently, uh, we believe that the vaccine is effective against the, the British variant and, uh, and hopefully also against the, the South African variant. We do not know exactly what is the, the level of, uh, of uh, the prevalence of the British variant in, in Israel, but we know that it exists there and it's probably also um, responsible, might be responsible for a huge uh, increase in certain communities in Israel certain uh, outbreak in uh, certain communities in Israel. Um, and that may be even makes uh, the, the necessity of having this uh, vaccination program uh, be uh, more widely and more urgently um, propagated uh, across all the adult population in Israel. The concerns that I have really are uh, regarding the herd immunity because um, if you expect a 100% effectiveness and an R0, R0 of uh, three, then you should vaccinate about two thirds of the population. If the British variant is here and uh, the R0 is, is even higher, then you have to vaccinate more than two thirds of the population. Well, a third of the population in Israel is children. So uh, um, my fear is that uh, having all these assumptions, we, we we, we won't be able uh, to, to reach uh, herd immunity, but hopefully it will, uh, it will impact the level of uh, severe cases of hospitalizations and maybe also reduce somehow the, the, R, the effective R.